And that really is who Holden is. Holden would never hurt anybody's feelings. Or Holden's a good judge of uh, whose feelings are hurtable without much damage. Um, and this woman is sensitive and a, a an adoring mother, and Holden is kind and merciful. Uh, it says a lot about Holden. Holden is a great judge of people. Salinger's point is that innocence judges people well. Innocence knows phony. Innocence senses phony. I think Salinger is a little too romantic on this. Uh, one can be a phony oneself, <laughs> maybe me, for example, uh, and I think be a pretty good judge of phoniness. Uh, most people are pretty good judges of phoniness, actually. Look around uh, when a person is being a, a pompous ass or showing off or saying, look at me, look at me. We all know it and we all feel it and we all react to it. Some people are kinder than other people. Generally, I think Koreans are very kind and tolerant toward that kind of behavior. Um, Koreans are so social, you interact so well that you deal with phoniness pretty well, as far as I can tell, in my limited, very limited exposure. Okay, uh, he calls a girl named Sally. Sally, he and Sally are friends, have been friends for a long time. The family are friends. Uh, so, same social level, uh, private schools, all private schools, all these people, almost all. Uh, okay, uh, Sally is kind of a phony, but Sally is not a bad person, and Sally, in her strange way, cares about Holden. Uh, Holden tries, she's very pretty, uh, and she knows she's pretty, and she wears somewhat provocative clothing. Uh, and so Holden doesn't conceal the fact that he would like to be with her. And they have kind of, they have kissed and held hands often uh, through the years. Um, but it's hard for Holden to get past the phoniness. Uh, she's so phony, she, she affects, she's, oh darling, uh, she speaks in the, in the affected manner of the movies. Uh, she's 16 years old, for God's sake, as, Homer, as uh, Holden would say. Um, Holden's great. They go to the theater together, and they see the Lunts. Alfred and something Lunt were famous actors, a couple, in the 40s and early 50s, uh, on Broadway. And Holden... Um, Holden can't stand being with Sally on this, though, because Sally just has to put on her airs, put on her phony act. And then during the intermission, uh, they have something to drink, and Sally meets one of her phony friends, as Holden says. Uh, and Holden repeats some of the things that phony friend says, and phony friend certainly is phony friend. Uh, can't stand it. After the theater, they go to a skating rink, Rockefeller Center, in fact. They rent skates. She rents a cute little short skirt to show off her nice legs and posterior. Uh, and this kind of annoys Holden, but he likes it too. But things end very badly, and he kind of explodes at her. And she doesn't deserve that kind of treatment. Um, and he feels terrible about it and guilty and he calls her later and she's kind really and she's kind and she's a little worried about him and if she's worried about him ah, this is a very ah, very good sign about who she is good sign good sign I have to get to the main incident so um, oh okay yeah he calls a guy who had been an upperclassman at one of the schools out of which he had flunked. The guy had graduated and had gone to New York City, was living with an Asian woman older than himself. And the implication is, well, wow, what a guy. This guy in the dorms used to lecture the small boys, the younger boys, about sex. Well, there are such boys in such dorms, of course. Uh, he, w he was a self-styled, self-proclaimed expert on sex. And the little boys, Holden included, would listen. Wow, 
Wow, you know everything. He would also love to snap his towel at boys in the showers because in these dorms, of course, there were the big showers, the public showers, so to speak, for all the dorm residents. There is at least a hint that the boy is sexual, is homosexual. No hint. He is. He is. And, but you say, but he's living with this Asian woman. He's trying to, he hopes that she can cure him of his homosexuality. There's no question about it. Uh, and Holden sees this, and he understands it pretty well, without saying so explicitly. But he's so lonely, he calls the guy. The guy comes and joins him for a drink. But the guy is scornful of Holden. Holden's been drinking too much already. And Holden tries to impress him, but uh, I don't remember the details here, but it's a, kind of an interesting encounter. But the guy leaves disgusted. Well, it's late at night, one of those nights, and Holden goes to the bathroom. He's very drunk. Uh, and he puts his head in water, cold water, and bathes his head, getting his hair wet, too. Then he goes out into that cold night air, cold night December air, and he walks in Central Park, uh, freezing, right? I mean, this contributes a lot to what happens. Uh, and he has memories of the ducks. He loves those, he used to love those ducks. And he takes a cab and he asks the cab driver, where do the ducks go in the winter? A child's question. A child's question asked by Holden, and he means it. <sighs> it's even important to him. Um... <sighs> It's one of those details that uh, that Salinger is so good at, so telling. Why is that so good? I guess uh, boy, oh boy. the best you can say is that it's a child's question, and Holden is a child, but he is also drinking and smoking and using bad language and coming in contact with a prostitute and uh, a homosexual boy and other things but he's a little bit he doesn't like the he's fascinated by but doesn't like the adult world and let's face it the adult world is fascinating but totally unlikable what is likable about the adult world what is admirable about the adult world not much not much Okay, now we'll come to a couple of the main incidents. We're I'm cutting low, getting low on time. He recalls Mr. Antonelli. Antonelli, the, Antolini, Antolini, A N T O L L I N I, Italian name. Mr. Antolini has a very important character. Third most important, fourth most important character in the book, maybe. Okay. He had been Holden's teacher at one of the schools, uh, English teacher, had recognized ability in, in, in Holden, had treated him like a, a friend, like a father, like an older brother, a great man. Okay, <clears throat> he is now teaching maybe at Columbia or something with a master's degree, so he's an instructor or something, and he's married. The, his wife is ten years older. Now, the most telling detail about Mr. Antolini is this. At that school where Holden, which Holden had attended and at which Mr. Antolini had been a teacher, there had been a boy named James Castle. Important. <sighs> James Castle was a little boy. Let's call him a Wangta. Not popular. Not liked. A quiet boy sensitive boy and a bully or a, a bully and his friends this is the way Wang Tao works isn't it a bully and his friends because there's the bully who is so popular and he's the man uh, and his friends who hang on and who are his sycophants and who will do anything he says because he's so cool 
this is the way it works. I'm sure it works this way in Korea. I know it does. It's everywhere. It's universal. This bully decides it would be fun to pick on James Castle. So they lock the room and they try to force him to do something. I don't think it's too outrageous. It's not some sexual act, I don't think. But James Castle refuses. And he refuses. So they're up on the third floor, fourth floor of the dorm. They open the window and say, do it or we're going to push you out the damn window. James Castle jumps. Jumps. Suicide. Basically, it's a Wong Ta suicide. Uh, is he afraid? I don't think so. I think he just wants to end his life. It's a Wong Ta suicide. And the bastards, the bastards who cause that kind of thing to happen and you all have seen them too because they're everywhere terrible thing I remember reading about uh, uh, this kind of thing in Japan and of course it happens here it happens everywhere and where it happens the Holdens and the decent ones of you guys watching um, have to have to just uh, God, what a world, huh? What a world. That's terrible. Mr. So the body had lain there, down there. Everyone heard the crash. He hit the sidewalk, dead. The body lies there. <sighs> Mr. Antolini. was the only one <coughs> who had, let's say, the strength of character to go over there, pick up the body, cover it with his own coat, and carry the body away. <coughs> okay, that's who... <coughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. That's who Mr. Antolini is. <coughs> If he did nothing else, <coughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. If he did nothing else in his whole life, <coughs> I think one would have to say, <laughs> damn, 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 that he's a good man. Okay, so Holden calls him up. Antolini is so happy to hear from. Come on over, my wife and I want to see you. Great. Now, as soon as we see him drink in his hand, he's already been drinking heavily. And he and his wife are always in different rooms, but they're both drinking. We know that there's no children. We see what kind of marriage this is. Uh, it's a miserable marriage. But they're two decent people, too. So these are not two people who will fight and scream at each other. These are two people who will remain strangers to each other. And it's sad. And Holden spots this right away. Of course, Holden is sharp. Holden is sharp. And... They invite Holden to sleep on his sofa, on their sofa, and Holden, look at what Holden has been through. He's exhausted. He's exhausted. And so he falls asleep on the sofa. During the night, he's, it's probably already 12 or 1 a.m., during the night, let's say 2 or 3, let's say 3, he wakes up to find Mr. Antolini stroking his head, stroking his hair. Oh, and Mr. Antolini also calls Holden handsome, he said. Oh, oh, but before going to sleep, oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Mr. Antolini gives Holden a long lecture. But a Mr. Antolini lecture will be good and important. And <clears throat> basically, he analyzes Holden perfectly.